This story and continue with it. A leaked government document shows emergency plans have been drawn up to protect the UK from the perfect storm of a winter second wave of COVID coinciding with a no-deal Brexit in Whitehall's reasonable worst-case scenario. One in 20 town halls could go bust, sparking social care chaos. The economic impact of f- and food shortages could cause public disorder and require soldiers to support the police. And the Channel Islands could need military airdrops. Harry Cole, the Sun's political editor, uh, wrote and put together this exclusive story. Uh, he's with us now. Harry, good to see you, sir. Oh, yeah. um, so this was a government leak, yes. essentially. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, these documents circulate around the sort of the, the, this has been kept on quite a high, uh, uh, quite a sort of high level of security. It's marked official secret. But there was a PowerPoint presentation yep. at the end of July to ministers, um, mainly so they could start to talk to businesses and stakeholders and make sure they're ready. The whole point of this document was obviously <laughs> you want to avoid this. Um, this was the reasonable worst case scenario. So this so, isn't what's good. No, it's it's, it's, the, it's the yellow hammer thing. Again, yeah, it's, it? not it's, a, not, it's not a prediction, yes. but it's a, it, it, you know, if all the things that could go wrong went wrong at the same time, this yep. is what could happen. And sure. you know, so it's a starting point for, I think, to give ministers a bit of a kick up the backside to get things get them ready get them preparing yeah. for for all of this and i think the government's damned if they do and they're damned if they don't obviously i don't think as one of your listeners just said there that this is any way designed as a pitch rolling or a softening up exercise this government yeah. is committed to delivering brexit and sure. leaving the transition period on the 31st of december as planned new year's leave as a as I, i'm calling it um however why did i not think of that <laughs> I'm devastated, Harry. You can come to my New Year's Leave party. <laughs> Is that all right? Yes, you are. <laughs> um, so, uh, where was it? No, to say, and if they didn't do this preparation, yeah. you know, people would be attacking them for for being complacent. And of course, uh, I don't, obviously, these sort of documents don't they don't particularly like it when they see the light of day because you know. P- People in this great culture war now yeah. jump on one side or the other and use it to beat, beat each other around the head. But I think, personally, that the public have a right to know what's going on behind the scenes. And also, if this is actually, you know, even in consideration uh, of a possibility of what might happen, mm. it heaps pressure on both sides sure. of the of the divide on Brussels and on, on, on particularly on France, who are directly, you know, connected yeah, with yeah. Dover and Calais, um, to actually sort this out to get a deal to make sure this sort of thing doesn't happen. Because if it did, the idea that it's just us that's going to be affected by it is, is is also nonsense. So you don't you don't buy into as one of our contributors just said the idea that this could be the government looking at some no, kind of reverse no, ferret moment. Absolutely, on. absolutely not. And you just got to listen to any of them, any any of the yeah. public senate statements from David Frost, the chief negotiator. Sure. from Michael Gove from Boris Johnson you know, they are all making it very clear in fact it's a matter of treaty law that we're leaving on the 31st of yep. December that is written into European law it's written into a treaty it's written into British law yep. so the idea that, that it, there is any backsliding on that hence why they're cranking up the dial a little bit on this preparation behind the scenes because mm. because that it is a fixed deadline now not like last time when you know the, the Remainer Parliament was able to hijack and, and, and force Boris Johnson to beg for an extension all those, all those games have gone now right, the good old this days. is written yeah, well, I don't miss them. I'm not sure anyone. I'm not sure anyone does. Speaking. Yeah. <laughs> those were dark, dark days covering Parliament. There was a, there was a long slog. Yeah. Um, no, though. So that, that is now written into law. So actually, he, you know, if nothing happened, if no agreement is forged, you know, on the 31st, of, yeah. on the 1st of January, sorry, next year, trade barriers go up, tariffs go up, yeah. uh, and we are dealing on WTO terms. So um, even. Even on a good day, there would be some disruption there because they believe that not everyone is possibly ready mm-hmm. for that. You know, they've got the prospect of haulage firms turning up at Calais, turning up Dover, not being allowed onto the trains. Uh, and so then, then also, we've got a lot of mitigation factors. I've just come out before I was uh, came jumped in the cab to come here. Uh, we just had our lobby briefing. It's all virtual now at the moment. Yep. So the Prime Minister's official spokesman, or his deputy, um, was chatting us through, and we were talking about this. And they talked about a series of mitigation factors which government are trying to put in place um, to avoid this sort of thing. And we had a bit of that in the story. They, they were quite open and honest once they realised we had the full horror show. Yes. <laughs> when I spoke Sorry, to them yeah. on Saturday afternoon, they were actually quite open and candid about okay. some of the things they're doing. They're increasing the NHS winter budget by £3 billion. Yeah. They're keeping those Nightingale hospitals yep. mothballed, but they're not shutting them down. So the capa- NHS capacity, which has been the biggest fear of, of, of the NHS falling over this, this whole year, that's a, a big issue. Um, they're planning yet another um, sort of communications blitz um, for the run up to the three months running up to uh, running up to the possibility of a no deal in the thirty first of December, to get companies ready to make sure that people do realise yeah. if you do turn up at Dover without the correct paperwork for the barriers that France and we would maybe put up, um, 
on the first of Jan, uh, then then you you know you're not going to be able to travel. So it's about I think it's about getting people ready. I think you know if we'd had this document leaked on the you know and on the you know in the middle of December and it turns out there's, there was no mitigation in in place, then obviously mm. I think that would be a huge scandal yeah, and, and a failure of government. But we've had frankly, a kind of, a... kind of kind of confident. It gives you a little bit of confidence that yeah, of actually behind the scenes there are some very smart sort of civil service contingency planners just just going look what if. What yeah, if there was a one in forty year flu pandemic at the same time as a COVID second wave, and and you know we've got storms coming tomorrow? What if we had a really bad winter of storms? And that's where things like the Channel Islands come yeah, into yeah. place because they are so reliant on imports for food and for medical equipment and supplies. And you just think, what if the, you know it's a particularly rough year? There are storms. Commercial aeroplanes get cut off, plus the boats get cut off, or there is chaos at, 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 at ports like yeah. Southampton, which supply those uh, supply those chains. Just you know, what 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 would it need to get the RAF in there just to make sure, sure that there were there you know enough drugs to keep people people you know, people alive and enough food on the shelves. So this is, I mean, there's a lot of scenarios would have to come. Yeah, out. no, absolutely. But I mean, it's I I, I find I'm, I'm a bit of a nerd for this sort of thing. But I find this sort of when you lift up the curtain a little bit on government and and show the inner workings on it. I think it's, it, great. it's fascinating. It's really it really is. Yeah. And it, I, one of the reasons I thought it was interesting to talk about this again because our, our friend social media, which is mm. the, the the playground of hyperbole. <laughs> which just yeah. loves to look Pick at this. Aside, as if, yeah. It was almost as if it was a press release that was, a, this is definitely going to happen in December. There's going yeah, to be a course. second wave. There's going to be uh, carnage down there in Dover. There's going to be, you know, horrendous <laughs> meteorological occurrences. Well, as long as on. the asteroid doesn't arrive the, same, the, the, same, the same week. At the yeah. same time. Um, but so in, in terms of the government being on it, I mean, and, and of course companies being on it, Harry, we, we, we've had a dress rehearsal for all of this, haven't yeah, we? Because no, we've absolutely. had previous dates that we were meant to have been leaving, which didn't happen, but one would assume haulage companies and the like would be geared up people. You would hope, you would hope, but is it, it is a sort of matter of capacity itself, of course. course. You know, yeah. We had the great the great for Fandango with the with the missing ferries and the, you know, yeah, but yeah. the government are looking to how they can increase capacity. That's the, yeah. you know, you can be as ready as you like, but if 150 trucks in front of you aren't, then it's, then it's, then it is it is a, a bit of an issue, and yes, we have had you know a lot of time to prepare. So your 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 listeners will remember sort of last year we had this thing called Operation Yellowhammer, yep. which is um, which is the uh, and which was the sort of contingency planning just for No Deal, and a lot of that was in place. That was sort of make, making sure that chemical supplies were in place for water purification, mm. things like um, uh, baby food, yeah, yeah. Um, sort of powdered milk, that sort of thing um, was was correctly stockpiled. Now, if going through the sort of hundred odd pages of this of this PowerPoint presentation, as I spent the last sort of week doing, um, a lot of it is is based on Yellowhammer, and it, sure. but it's sort of Yellowhammer plus. It's Yellowhammer yeah. plus some of the horror things we've yeah, seen yeah. this year. And the other thing to remember, actually, is, is when you look at this stuff, is actually there was a lot of scaremongering from the Remain side. There was a lot of uh, sort of stiff upper, lip, stiff upper mm. lips from the Brexit side, yeah. where they sort of glossed over some of the details. But I think what the feeling in, in tide number 10 now, and in, in fact, it's a bit of a string in the bow in terms of negotiation with Brussels, is actually the public are pretty hardened now to, to this yeah. stuff. And if you look at the, some of the, the most dire warnings that were made about no deal Brexit, and then compare to what the country has been through since March, I mean, it was a drop in the ocean. You know, yeah, yeah. some of the, th the, the the numbers we were talking about in terms of, of impact to GDP yep. and the amount of government spending that could have to go up on certain That's things. All changed, it's all gone. It? Like that, that whole argument point. has just yeah, been yeah. destroyed. Totally. And actually, you know, the you know, the country has been through a horrific year. Yeah. It has been awful. It has been tough, and God knows how we're going to pay for it. So, the, but in a, in a, actually, that scaremongering yes. uh, attack has, has been taken out because if you're going to start saying, "Well, this if we if we have a no deal Brexit, it will increase this by you know X percentage," yeah. and you think, "Yeah, but that's a hundred times less than I was going to say because all the, anything that's happened because uh, of COVID. You know, I, I interviewed, I, I think probably every economist that, that that lives on planet Earth over mm. the last couple of years on on these points, and certainly some, many from the left were saying you know, they were giving numbers. GDP numbers and the like. And yeah. well, this is how this, this, we, we could not survive this. Well, in fact, where we are now, yeah. I mean, we, because we're, of COVID, is yeah. worse than that. And the, scenario, the twenty, so. the twenty point hit we've taken to GDP in the, uh, this year was far, far greater than anything than any predictions. Yeah, so actually, course. I think it's going to be quite tough to, to for people to make an argument that oh, we couldn't possibly it's handle very good no deal yeah. because actually the resilience of this country has been proven by by what it's been through since March. What are you hearing out of Brussels, Harry, in terms of 
they're you know we, we often see it as impenetrability that they're impervious to any kind yeah. of you know British logic on this. Is I'm going to I'm going to point true? you to tomorrow's Sun for that. I'm okay. afraid <laughs> I'm not going to get into it is now it good because uh, it's an exclusive story for for our readers tomorrow. But um, we're going to get stuck into quite uh, what's going on in Brussels and perhaps all I'm going to say is but it, maybe the penny is beginning to drop. Oh, well, let's hope so. Yeah. Let's hope so. Um, good. And are you confident, by the way? Because I'm reading all these stories and I'm supremely relaxed about... I know these possibilities of, you know, cues here and COVID there. And, um, no. I'm, I'm instinctively, Brussels, journalistically and otherwise, I feel great about Brussels all this. had the opportunity, if they wanted it, to accept a very close and tight alignment and a tight relationship when Theresa May offered them checkers. Yep. And they laughed in her face. In fact, quite literally, they were, you know, to the yeah, point yeah. of rudeness. So they have now, they have the ones that have, have rejected that. And actually, you know what? In post COVID, post what the country's been through, post what the the economy has was 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 yeah, withstood yeah. in the last few months, actually, you know, when you when you look at what's on the table for for uh, for, for, for for the deal, which is essentially a, a relationship similar to Canada, yep. You know, actually, once you can drill down into it, once you exclude security, which we'd expect either side to do a side deal on, if in a no deal scenario. Yeah. Uh, and and the city aside, which you know, let's look, let's face it, you know, these big companies tend to look after themselves. Of course. Actually, what is the major difference between some of this? You know, it's a few tariffs here and a yeah, few yeah. tariffs there. And you know, realistically, in the in the, are they, are independent countries separate from the EU and Britain really going to want to keep those tariffs up forever? I don't think so. So I think, look, there may be some short term disruption. There may be some short term economic. Um, pain, no, nothing we've seen on the scale of COVID. Of but in the end of the day, I am confident that you know countries find a way to trade. Yeah. That has been been the same, been ever thus and for hundreds of years. And as we said at the beginning, you know, being in the EU is not a law of physics. It's exactly, not, you know, it's a club we joined not five thousand years ago, but you know, less <laughs> the than club 50, we joined, so. but with quite a lot of tentacles. <laughs> Indeed, quite a lot of them. <laughs> Harry, good to see you, sir. Thank Anytime. you, Harry Cole, political editor at the Sun, who broke that story. Oh three four 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 nine nine one thousand.